Hey everyone, Dylan here with Surefront. Today we're going to walk through applying for an SBA disaster loan. This is the same application that you need to apply for the $10,000 grant that the government is giving out uh, for your case, hopefully very immediately. So the first thing you're going to do is go to Google. Very simply, just type in the SBA idle grant and the second uh, listing is what you want to click on. So this is the COVID-19relief.sba.gov. Click on Disaster Loan Assistance. And this will take you to the main page uh, where you can apply for this. So it'll take you through the different steps to walk through. And let's just get started. So you're going to fall under either this category or the second one. So you're either probably going to be an applicant that is a business with not more than 500 employees or an applicant or an individual who operates under sole proprietorship uh, as an independent contractor. Uh, so like a gig worker, for instance, could fall under that category. So let's go ahead and click on not more than 500 employees. And then just go through these one by one. You most likely will be clicking on all of these. So applicant is not engaged in any legal activity. Hopefully you're not. Uh, no principal of the applicant with uh, a 50% or greater ownership interest is more than 60 days delinquent. So this is, you know, just making sure you're an ethical business, that you're also not uh, an ag agricultural enterprise, that uh, you don't do anything that is in a sexual nature, uh, that the applicant does not derive more than one-third of the gross alcohol revenue from gambling. So probably click on all these, hopefully, and then continue through. Uh, this is as it presents itself. So this is your business legal name. So let's just say it's my business. And this is your trade name, so you're like your DBA, if you have one, or just whatever you do business as. Uh, this is your EIN or your SSN if you're a sole proprietorship. So most of you probably will be an EIN. And organizational type. So you know you can go through this is you'll find this on your tax forms last year. So if you're an S corp or a C corp. Uh, limited liability company, sole proprietorship. So let's just go with LLC. Clicking no on these. And this is your gross revenues for 12 months prior to the date of the disaster. So this is going to be from February 1st, 2019 to January 30th, 2020. So you want to make sure that you're entering in that right date. This is not just the gross revenues of your tax return. This is for the 12 months prior uh, to the date of the disaster, January 31st. So again, that's February 1st, 2019 to January 30th, 2020. So let's just say that was a million. I think that's a million there. And cost of goods sold. So if you're a service provider, like a lawyer or CPA, uh, you're not going to have any cost of goods sold. That, that would be zero. But if you're in, say, the retail industry and you have products that you uh, purchase and sell, um, then you put that cost of goods sold in there. So let's just say we are, and we'll put in 700,000 in there. Um, these are, are not required. These are specific to a business if you want to enter these. So this is, you know, rental properties if that's your business, or um, this is if you're a nonprofit, this is if you're a, a faith based entity here. Uh, you know, it goes down. So this is for specific businesses here. So enter it in, and if you are, but if you're not any of these specific businesses, you don't need to fill out that section. Uh, this is your address, so let's just make up something here. Sorry, Main Street. And let's just go, if I can get this right, Los Angeles, and then scroll down on. So just fill out wherever you are. Zip code, business phone, not a real number, of course. Uh, business email, so let's just say you're john at smith.com. And this is the date the business was established. So I believe if you're a sole proprietorship, you can find this on your tax forms. But if not, uh, and you don't have that readily available, you can just go to California Secretary of State and go to business search. You should be able to just do a new search here. And let's say we're doing something specific to uh, 
to Los Angeles. Let's just say we're lucky enough to own the Los Angeles Dodgers corporation name. And this will tell you uh, when that business was actually registered. So in the case of the Dodgers, February 6, 1958. And we can go back here and enter that in. Current ownership sense. So this may very well be that exact same date, probably is for most of you out there, 1958. Business activity, so you know whatever is pertinent to you. So this gives you a list of categories you can enter in here. Uh, I bet the Dodgers are probably listed under entertainment services, though I take them more seriously than that. Uh, detailed business activity, so again, just what you happen to do here, event planning. Number of employees. Most of you are probably going to be 50 or less. Click on the next page. So this is entering in your information as the business owner. Mobile phone. Title. Let's go CEO here. Uh, ownership percentage. So if you have uh, co-owners with you or investment, but uh, if you own the whole thing yourself, 100%. Let's do John at Smith dot com and social not going to put a real one there date of birth place of birth Los Angeles US citizen yes and we'll just put in a another address there so again this is your your personal information here um, so you're not going to be putting in the business information there but where you actually live California here, zip code. Okay, oh yeah, and one important step, uh, I'm glad we actually missed it so I can show you, is up here, this is kind of hidden, this says, is your business owned by a business entity? Got to click yes or no on this. Uh, most of you will probably be saying no, 99% of you, I imagine. So click no there, or also won't let you go through to the next screen. So I'll go through the next screen here. Hopefully we're answering no to any of these as well. So this is in the past year, has a business where a listed owner been convicted of a criminal offense? No. Is the applicant or any listed owner currently suspended or debarred? No. And no as well. So if we're, if we're not a criminal, uh, we're gonna click no on all of those. This is if someone else assisted you. So say your CPA or a lawyer assisted you in filling out the form, you would fill out this portion Probably most of you are also not filling this out. And then this is very important. Uh, I would like to be considered for an advance of up to $10,000. So make sure you click on that uh, 100%. Uh, and then you're just gonna put down your uh, bank information here, account information, routing number here. And then that's it, scroll down, read this information Click on this, and uh, obviously this is a fake form, so we're not going to fill this out. Click on next there, and uh, and you're good to go. Um, that's all you need to do. Follow it step by step. Uh, start with Google. Work all the way down through those three pages on the form. And uh, I do want to make sure that I mentioned to you I'm not a CPA. I'm not your tax advisor or lawyer. So if you do need to get uh, further assistance on that, uh, please do so. This is just an instructional video. And uh, that's it. Best of luck. Thank you so much and stay safe out there.